Hey guys, so today what we're going to talk about is how to fight artist block, okay? Um, and it's something that a lot of creative people deal with, feeling like you're just stumped, you can't move forward, you uh, can't think of anything creative or interesting, and uh, it's, it's something that a lot of people feel like it's difficult to overcome. So, the first thing we need to realize when we're fighting artist block, the first step in, you know, being able to start creating stuff again is to stop giving it the credibility of being real. And what I mean by that is that artist block is only as real as the power we give it. For example, uh, accountants. You would never hear an accountant say, uh, I can't, I just can't work today because I'm having accountants block. I can't. I just can't work, I'm just, I'm sorry, right? That's ridiculous, you would never hear any professional say that. Um, and so we need to look at ourselves as professionals. Are we gonna be amateurs or are we gonna be professionals? Are we going to uh, simply, you know, let artist block overcome us or are we just gonna decide to keep working? Now, that doesn't mean that because we're going to discredit artist block that it's not difficult to come up with creative ideas. That's always going to be the case, and it's the case in any profession where you need to come up with something new. Um, but we cannot let that be any sort of reason for us to just stop working or to just stop creating. We have to push through it. So some ways uh, that I find to help me get past that and increase my creativity. Um, First off, I just want to say that uh, there's this common trap that we tend to fall into a lot when we're feeling like we need to find inspiration for our art or come up with creative ideas, and that is to uh, start browsing Pinterest for hours, um, either Pinterest or DeviantArt or wherever else we like to go to look at art we like. And we tell ourselves it's because we're trying to get reference photos or because we uh, want to get inspired. But what ends up happening is we just spend hours and hours and hours flipping through Pinterest uh, and instead of getting motivated and inspired, uh, we're just kind of entertaining ourselves and sometimes even maybe getting a little bit demotivated because we can see how good some of these people out there are and it can make us feel discouraged and like it's impossible for us to ever get there or overwhelmed at the amount of work we're going to have to do to get to that point. And so when I'm trying to get inspired or uh, find, you know, creativity lurking somewhere, I found that Pinterest really actually isn't that great of a way to go unless I already have a specific idea and I'm just looking for reference photos to help me create it. So the next thing though, so if we're not going to be going to Pinterest uh, to help solve our uh, creative uh, block problem, then where else should we go? So some places that I go that really help me. One is my old sketchbooks. If I ever get to a point where I just feel stuck and I feel like I can't think of anything new, then what I do is I go look at my old sketchbooks. And the reason why is because a lot of times in the past when we're younger or um, you know, just starting out, we come up with some really great ideas that are really creative and really interesting. But at the time, our artistic level isn't high enough to really do them justice or make them look good. And so as opposed to looking at Pinterest where we see these ideas that are really inspiring, but they belong to someone else and they're also already done really well, we can look at our old sketchbooks, which is our content, and also see, you know what, that's a really good idea, but with the skill level I have now, I think I could do that even better and make something cooler or use that idea to create something new. So looking at your old sketchbooks or your old art can be a great way to find that inspiration and motivation to start drawing again, especially when you can see how much you've progressed. Um, the next thing uh, for getting, you know, inspiration, honestly, is life. Uh, like, if you're sitting there in your house or your apartment and you're feeling stumped, like you can't do anything, go outside and start walking around, right? Start looking at different people's faces and see if that brings anything to mind or, you know, just like the trees and, you know, different cars, like, go outside and explore stuff because... That's where everything, the source of everything we draw comes from anyways is life. That's the ultimate uh, source material because we couldn't possibly comprehend anything that isn't from life. Um, at least that doesn't have reference from life. So, yeah, go outside. Go go explore. Um, and then one last thing that's kind of like a, maybe like a, 
activity or something that can help get the creative juices flowing sometimes. And it's pretty simple and it's kind of silly, I guess. But sometimes it helps me, which is to, um, there's a couple of them. One, take like a household object like uh, this mouse, for example. Take something like this mouse, either take a picture of it or just draw it from reference and try and turn this into something other than what it is. But using like the same shape and form and stuff, you know, like maybe you could turn this into some sort of alien or a spaceship, right? Look at everyday objects around you and think, you know, what can I turn this into? Um, another one that I used to do a lot, I don't do it so much anymore, but I used to, to kind of get warmed up was to take a piece of paper and just draw a scribble all over it or have someone else do it for you, some sort of shape like this. And then take that scribble and see if you can turn it into something, right? Take those lines and create a drawing out of it using that as the basis. It's kind of challenging. It can be really hard, but by the time you're done, you don't have a perfect drawing that you'd probably really want to show anyone or post anywhere, but it can create something that gives you the idea to think, wow, that's a really interesting concept or that's a close shape. If I redrew that and kind of refined it a little bit, that could turn out pretty nice. So those are kind of my tips for overcoming uh, artist block. But yeah, just remember, the most important thing is don't give it the credibility, okay? It doesn't deserve it. You're in charge, okay? Artist block, it's not a real thing. It's all in your head and you're in charge of whether or not you're gonna be creative. So hope that was helpful for you guys. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, subscribe, be sure to like and comment. Let me know what kind of tutorials you wanna see. Um, my creature design course is so close to being finished. I'm going to be filming hopefully the very last bit of it today. And if I'm lucky, I'll be posting it. Uh, it'll be live tomorrow. So I'll do an announcement video about that. And, uh, let me know, uh, if there's any artists you want me to interview. Um, it seems like people maybe weren't interested and then people told me they were still interested. So uh, I'm not sure if you're interested, let me know, tell me who you want to see. Um, people that I'm trying to get uh, to be interviewed. I have Mel Milton, who's agreed to do it. I have uh, Lois Van Barlow, who I'm talking with, or Lois as she goes by online. Um, I really want to try and get Bobby Chiu on here to talk with him. So let me know if there's any artists that you uh, want to see interviewed. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.